All right, joining us now, uh, and he had a, I don't know how long he was on. I don't know how much of a chance he had to hear the uh, the quarterback spring football report. Uh, but uh, Britton Abbott joins us, and boy, you remember those? You remember those quarterback days? Oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> That's kind of foreign to me now. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a long time ago. But you know, I, I'm not going to ask you about the Oklahoma State quarterback situation, but I am going to ask you this: um, uh, you you remember those days? And when you're a quarterback, um, it's important that you, uh, first of all, you're a leader, but that you inspire confidence in the guys around you. And and um, how how when you were playing quarterback back in the high school days, how conscious of you uh, were you of that? That hey, even if things don't look good, I need to have a smile on my face, and guys need to believe that everything's yeah, okay. Huge, yeah. yeah, that's huge. I can remember um, just going into games and practices, always thinking about other guys on the team and just making sure everybody was, um, you know, at their best. Um, uh, and I think that a lot of people will go right ahead and say, how good of an arm do they have or how good of an athlete do they have? But that's really like second, third to being a leader. Um, uh, leadership for a team is huge. A lot of the times it's, it's bigger than, um, you know, what kind of ability they have. It's more what kind of a person and what can they can do for the team, what kind of value that they can, uh, you know, bring the team to make others better. And uh, I think that's really overlooked, and you can't, it's hard to put a value on it. It really is. It's hard to put a value on it, but um, a lot of times it's more important than just the, the physical attributes that they have um, just already. Well, uh, again, you made you made the transition. I think you made it really well, and and uh, obviously have put yourself in a, in a position now where you got a chance to play football beyond college. Britton, I, I, who, who's your agent? His name is James Scotell out of St. Louis. Okay. Um, you're, after you finished up this season, uh, your next objective was Pro Day. And, you know, I, I look at Pro Day, uh, Combine, Pro Day, whatever. To me, if I'm an NFL general manager, scout, coach, whatever, I'm looking at, okay, who came out and did – maybe better than what we thought they were capable of because what that tells me i mean i 40 times and all that i'm, I'm one of those guys put on the tape and can the guy play football because that to me is more right. important but oh, no. the pro day and testing that tells me who really cares enough to work their butt off to right. put up really good results and you did that i mean you ran a, a 471 in the 40 uh, you had the 36 inch vertical um, you know, you did fine on the bench press rep test. And, and uh, I just thought, I thought you gave a really good account of yourself. What kind of feedback have you heard since, since pro day? Um, really, it's been really positive. Um, a lot of the teams that have contacted my agent or, or just had a you know, little talk with us, um, it, it's been, I think, very positive and, and I've kind of been able to, Project and look and see where my stock is for the draft, uh, and it's risen up to about sixth, seventh round of free agents. So all, all I need is really an opportunity. Um, I just need one team to, to go ahead and, and say that this is our guy and give me a shot and just take take the most of that. Um, I think for pro day, uh, for me, it was a lot about just going and showing the other half of what I could do because my, if you look at the film, you can you can see that I can block really well, but. Uh, just kind of how the offense was structured. It wasn't a, a whole lot of touches. You know, you're not going to get the ball a whole lot at the position I was playing. But um, I think on pro day, I just showed that I'm really good with the ball and showed some ball skills and ran really fluid and just showed myself in space because the other half of me, the film shows that I was good uh, being physical and blocking. So it was really about convincing them um, that I can do the other half of, of my position. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but you you won't have any problem remembering your catches in in your college career. Cause, <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, I won't. you know, but but I tell you what, you may have trouble remembering is is how many guys on defense you knock sideways and and you know cause them to to you know have second thoughts about wanting to be <laughs> out there and running into you. Here's the other thing too that I think is in bad and I. You know, when I was when I was young and and covering guys, 
I had several friends of mine that were players that came back and said, let me tell you something. The first thing I tell guys that they should do when they get into a pro football program, into a team, uh, whether it's mini camp, rookie mini camp, training camp, whenever, as soon as you can, you go to the special teams coach's office or get around him and say, look, no doubt. I just want you, yeah, I want you to know, I'm yours, man. I'll do anything yeah. you ask me to do. Exactly, yep. Yeah, I'm all about that. And that um, oh, there's no I, doubt you're all about that. Right. My um, dad was actually a coach. So he bounced around it a little bit, but he did a little special teams while he was a coach at the University of Tulsa. And, you know, just the saying is the more you can do, the longer you can stay in the National Football League. So that's something that I've really just looked at and said, hey, this is fun. this is where I can – add a lot of value and help out a team win um, is literally every phase of special teams go make an impact. Um, and I think that that's kind of come from my family a little bit, but it's something that I enjoy doing. And you're exactly right. As soon as you get on a team, that's, that's got to be one of the first offices that I walk into and try and convince them that, hey, let me help. Well, and you went out there on pro day and snapped. How much work did you put into uh, snapping before you did that with, uh, with Matt Hockett on pro day? Uh, every day we snapped for at least an hour. Um, he's he's kicking, so some of it I was holding for him. But I, you know, I just worked the technique. My brother snapped at uh, University of Tulsa as well, so he worked he worked with me right. a little bit. Like I said, my dad was a special teams coach, and he kind of taught me a little bit. And also our strength GA um, Zach here on the team, he helped me a lot. He would work with me on the weekends. And, uh, I worked a little bit with our special teams coach, so I got a little bit from everybody, you know. And I just kind of did my research and just put in the hours and work, and I feel really comfortable with it now. Um, it's a skill. It's kind of like a golf swing. It's not something that's just muscle. It's a skill. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, I just feel comfortable with it and put in a lot of work. And uh, I think I think right now I'm right on league average for snap time. Accuracy is something that you're always working, but um, they like that, I'm, that I've played fullback, so I already know how to block and run downfield and make a tackle. So, that's something that I'm hoping to leverage here in the future. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. And uh, I thought that was extremely intelligent on your part to come out ready to do that. And and I remember talking to at least a couple of pro scouts that I, are friends of mine. I've known them over the years. And, and when they came back in after the kicking segment, uh, I didn't go out. And somebody said, yeah, you know, uh, Britt Abbott snapped, and he was pretty good. And I asked one of my one of my buds that's a scout, and he said, "Yeah." He goes, "That uh, I tell you what that shows us that shows us somebody that has been doing extra work and really wants to play football." And it's kind of like what Mike Gundy talks about all the time. He, you know, in recruiting before he brings in a player, it's it's how much do you love the game of football? And I think the work you put in for pro day showed you really love the the game and want to keep playing it. Do you try or does your agent try and and uh, match up, okay, these are the teams that really put a value on a fullback and uh, these are the teams that, that may be most apt or do you just say, you know, okay, just whatever happens or, or do you actually look and say, you know what, these are the these are the teams that probably most likely, you know, have an interest in me. Yeah, he, he actually does a pretty good job with that. He has a database that he's kind of compiled of, of teams that use a full, use a fullback, um, guys that kind of have hybrid positions, and then he looks and sees what the age of the guys on the roster are, and how how secure that position is, and we kind of compile a, a, a I don't know I guess you'd say just get our thought process ready on which teams are probably most interested and which places would have your best chance of sticking on a roster and making it. So we definitely have done our research and. Um, just kind of staying ready, but you know, if another team comes out of the blue and says, "This is we want you," and this is it, I mean, I'm not going to be opposed to it. I'm going to do whatever it takes. No, and, and you know, this is about the time a week out from the draft that, I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, I've I've right. I've sat with guys. You know, my most famous story is Paul Blair, who who played at Oklahoma State, was an offensive tackle, and he had a rent house in Stillwater. And, his dad uh, was, was a preacher. Paul eventually became a preacher. Uh, but we're sitting in his house, and he had been told, I guess, by several teams, hey, we're going to draft you. You know, if you're not drafted, we're going to take you in the second round. 
Well, the second mm-hmm. round goes through and nobody picks him. We get into the third round and, and a team that had sworn they were going to take him, drafted and picked somebody else. He said a word in the living room with TV cameras there that his mom wasn't real happy about him saying. And and she sent him mm-hmm. to, to his room in his own rent house. And, and you know, we kind of got up and, and I said, hey, we appreciate it. We're going to go down the street and, uh, and we'll come back, you know. We go down the street, and this was Rusty Hilger and and one of his buddies, a receiver, that they were, you know, prospects. We go down there, and let's just say it was a much more relaxed atmosphere. No parents, and and, and you had to kind of walk through a haze. But that was back in the day where there were more hazes around campus. So, anyway, it just, you know, it's completely different. But how, I mean, how are you going to – I mean, watch the draft. I mean, you plan on just being around family. What are you going to do? I I think talk to my parents. Um, I, I really don't want to watch it. <laughs> I uh, I want okay. to do something with my family. <laughs> uh, I want to do something with my family. And I, right now, I'm probably just going to go watch my little cousin's t ball game, and get around my family, and and uh, just be by a phone and, and probably my dad and, and my agent. Just uh, whenever calls start coming. Um, I think I think they'll just go ahead and handle it from there. But it's going to make a long day if you just sit there on that TV and wait. So I, I, I kind of got this from Taylor a little bit uh, that I'm just going to stay away from the, the TV and and just wait for a call and go from there. I'd rather just rather just have less stress and take it take it as it comes. Well, at last thing of the former players, because I mean you've been on a team that's had a lot of guys that. In fact, there's a sure. lot of guys at that position. You know, Blake Jarwin is is now with right. Dallas, and he's gotten his big break. And and uh, you know, but last year with uh, you know James Washington and Mason and right. you know, all those guys. And uh, I mean, who who has given you the best advice about hey, just relax and you know, be ready for anything? Right, Blake Jarwin, without a doubt. Oh. Yeah. Being being in the same position group, we already had a pretty good relationship built up, and I have picked his brains before pro day, after pro day, probably more than he even wants. But uh, he's helped me quite a bit and just given me advice on a lot of different things, and um, he, he's he's really helped me prepare for whenever I get that call, how to be ready to go into that that mini camp or whatever whatever I have next, how to be in shape for it, and just different things that he wishes he would have done going in and so i've just been able to utilize that resource he's been awesome to me um he's a he's a good friend of mine that i'll have for for many years to come but yeah definitely blake uh, just look at what he's done it's a great guy to learn from no there's there's no doubt about it and uh, again uh congratulations on everything i thought y- your pro day was one of the most impressive things that happened that day the way you kind of went out and and took charge and 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 showed off. I thought you and and uh, I thought also thought Taylor did well and and uh, Jordan for what he needed to do coming off the Without combine doubt, yeah. and you know you know so uh, Tyron had a nice forty, but right. uh, it was it was it was a good pro day. But I thought you were one of the highlights. So good luck with it, it. Uh, and uh, we'll look forward to to seeing what happens. And and again, uh, uh, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's going to miss you. It, it, you, hey, you I, I know, that. I know, I know the five catches. But here's the thing that I'll always remember: every time it seemed like I would look out there on special teams, I always saw you out there. Whether you were a fullback on the kickoff return unit, whether you were, you know, uh, playing on the punt unit. I mean, it just seemed like every time I looked at a special teams, and now right. you're deep snapping. This is this. That's amazing. I, I think the deep snapper thing may that may be the thing that keeps you around the league uh, a long time. Because if I'm you can so. master that, yeah, that'll be awesome. So yeah. I always like it when I see those deep snappers sign another contract. That's that's you know that's cool. So well, good yes, luck. Sir. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. All right, Britt Abbott, Cowboy back, and now. Uh, future NFL uh, player, and I think he is going to be like a a Swiss Army knife for somebody. 